days off. Yeah. All right, guys, so welcome back to the video and welcome back to the channel. I hope you had a great weekend. And today we're going to be going over, we're going to switch up a little bit. It's been requested by a few members that I do a trade breakdown. Why is it always on NASDAQ? So today we're going to switch up and I'm going to show you that the concepts do indeed work on other pairs too. And we used to trade Forex in the past. We used to trade Euro USD, GBP, JPY, GBP, USD, mostly the USD pairs because the macros are the same for when we trade NASDAQ as well, like the 950, 1010 macro transfers over to the USD. USD pairs in Forex. So they're the best pairs to trade. So today I thought, why not? Let's go over a Forex breakdown trade. And I'm going to show you guys simply what a unicorn setup is here. So getting straight into it, you can see that we have this minor buy side liquidity. I've marked this all out to make it simpler so I can explain the unicorn setup in brief detail before we get into a breakdown trade. So basically, on the say the 15 or five minute time frame, this would be a minor buy side liquidity because you can see this would be a short term high and then it's taken out that previous high of buy side liquidity and the original sweep, you always want to see it get taken out one more time. So always look for the first sweep of buy side liquidity to get taken out again. And for anyone who's had stops at this level, anyone who had stops that resting at this level, they have then been taken out once again. So anytime a price moves lower it is expected to always anticipate some measure of a stop hunt on buy stops or a short-term high being taken out what this means is that when a short-term high is taken out after it's been taken out then you look for a displacement below the previous swing low it creates vice versa so if you was to take longs then you would look for that short-term low to get taken out below sell side liquidity so say this was sell side liquidity right and it got taken out the original sweep of sell side liquidity you look for that to get taken out one more time and it will create a swing high and you look for price then displace higher through that swing high and because I've drawn this out with lines we're not able to see a fair value gap but that's just for this example have an imaginary fair value gap here and this would be your order block so an order block is the low created before the sweep of a buy side liquidity so this would be an, a valid order block you could actually enter short of this inside of the fair value gap we always enter off a tap on the gap so if the order block is above or in the middle of the fair value gap it's always best to just enter straight away off the tap of the fair value gap instead of waiting for that because i would say probably 60 70 percent of the time it's not going to come to that and it's not going to give you an entry and you're going to miss the trade. There's been plenty of trades this week whilst trading NASDAQ when price just hasn't given us an entry. It's not been the cleanest price section to be honest due to NFP and it was expected but we took it on the chin and it wasn't the cleanest week for us but we have very good risk management and we make sure that we follow our risk management plan and our rules never get broken and that's how we manage to stay on top and be profitable in the long term because if you stick to your rules and you have good risk management even if you are to take a couple losses, few losses, it's not a problem because the losses you're taking are so small compared to your wins it doesn't make any effect in your account and the equity curve for your account is always going up a lot of people don't understand when they're trading ICT you want to trade it as if your life depends on it because it does at the end of the day you can't be breaking your rules or trading outside of the macro or if you break any rules it's the exact same as it's like going to the gym and then coming out of the gym and having a cheat meal as soon as you've left the gym it's you're breaking your rules you're not going to get the maximum amount of gains from the the gym so there's no point even like going to the gym you're basically just wasting your time and it's the same with trading because if you're trading ICT concepts or any concepts in general and you're not following your rules and you're taking trades outside of macro then you're not actually getting the full potential and the full effect of the concepts which you are trading that's why it's very important if all your rules have not been ticked so you got a checklist right and you have to wait for every single box to be ticked for you to take an entry it's very simple and a lot of you already know what you need to see in price for you to take a trade but some of you are still struggling with rushing into trades which you know are not good so what, what's the rush you just want to be patient with price because you know in the near short-term future you're going to get a clean setup it's inevitable a clean setup is coming in the near future so why take this poor trade now all right that's enough rambling for now let's get straight into a breakdown trade of one of the trades so we're going to be looking at gbp usd on the replay chart no this is not a live trade i'm just showing you guys a breakdown of one of the trades some of you do trade forex so i'm going to show you a breakdown of one of the trades which happened this week inside of the macro very clean setup let's get straight into it getting straight into it before the new york open at 9 30 you want to mark out all the key buy side and sell side liquidity on the five minute time frame so we're going to mark out 
and look for any key levels on the five minute time frame which we can see which will have the biggest effect on price as we go into the new york session so this is a very obvious previous high this is a very obvious previous high as well we got this as a previous low and then we also have these two previous swing highs which we can look to mark out as minor buy sell liquidity as well this will be your major buy sell liquidity and this is london highs as well so you've got london highs have already been taken out during that trading session as well so it's good to bear that in mind too and this would be london lows as well so this would so your major buy sell liquidity is here and your major sell side liquidity is here this is major because this is london lows and we also have some relatively equal lows here as well which is a very high probability level for price to draw to as well and look to sweep that too so you could mark out these equal lows as well but it's literally resting around london lows so i'm just going to leave it as that And now we're coming up to the New York Open. You want to mark out this minor buy sell liquidity. Why this level here? Because we also have this bullish Feverly gap resting below here too. So this could be a drawn liquidity for a short term low to get taken out before we can see a move higher and target these major key levels here as well. So it's good to just have a bias, an open bias looking at the both probabilities of each levels getting swept. And you can see that price is currently in a discount as well. So in this instance, we'd rather look for longs than shorts because we're currently in a discount. Right, and now we're just going to wait to see which levels get swept prior to the 950 1010 macro. So you look for your entries between this window, and we're going to look to see which levels get swept. We're looking to see if any of these sell side liquidity gets swept, and then we can look for obviously that short term low to get taken out from the sweep of sell side, and then obviously a displacement higher, and a few other confluences to enter this trade. And we'll see what we get going into this macro. So let's fast forward price and see what we get. All right, so that previous sell side liquidity, that minor sell side liquidity has just been taken out and you can see that price has wicked down into this bullish fairly gap as well and it's gained some traction and we've seen a sharp move higher prior to the macro of 950. So let's keep fast forwarding price and see what happens. So if we were to get a displacement higher prior to the macro, we would see a displacement higher above this previous swing high which is created here. So we look for price to displace higher above this level you can also see prior to the new york session uh, price had already taken out we had some equal lows here generated equal lows and price has already taken out these equal lows here and swept this sell side liquidity here and then we also have this minor sell side liquidity where that short term low has then been taken out as well and we've tapped into that one minute bullish now we're looking prior to the macro to see if we get that displacement higher if not then obviously there'll be no trades and you don't have to trade every single macro a lot of people they get this muddled up and they they really want to make money inside of that macro. Everyone wants to make money, right? But that's not how trading works. You have to stick to your rules. And if you don't get a trade, you wait until the next macro. So you have to be very strict with yourself because if you're not strict with yourself, you're either not gonna make any money or well, there is no either. It's either you're gonna blow your account or blow your account. So you have to stick to your rules. And if there's no trades, no, no trades, but we're anticipating a displacement right now. So let's see if we get it. All right, so we got that displacement higher and it left behind a bullish Feverly gap for our entry. We're not currently inside of that macro, so we're going to see if price taps into this bullish gap inside of the macro and then we will take it. We're not going to enter two, three minutes before the macro. We're going to look to see if price at 950 gives us a tap on that bullish Feverly gap and then we use this as our first TP second tp and final tp and we run our stop at the low of this unicorn setup as well there you go so this candle right here this is the 950 candle which you'd use for your entry this little green one here it's the first candle which is inside of the macro inside of this bullish favorite gap therefore you would enter long at this level here you'd run your stop at the low of this previous swing low which it created before the displacement and then your first tp would be at this level second tp at this level and your final TP at this level here. Along the way, you're gonna be managing your risk. At first TP, you close out 50% of your position, then you'll close out 20%, and then the further 30% of your position here. And you would trail your stop along the way, and I will show you guys how to trail your stop correctly as well. So let's see how this trade plays out. There you go. So first TP has been hit. And at this point, we're going to trail our stops. To, you see this previous swing low, which you created here? We're going to trail our stops to this level. So it's given us a very, very small drawdown. Therefore, securing profits on this trade and it's completely risk free. So we're going to trail our stops to this level and continue the trade.
Right, you can see now we'll be around 70% closed out of our position and we're going to trail our stops to this previous swing low here which we created, which is two previous swing lows behind. So the reason we trail our stops two swing lows behind at second TP is because price around second TP would usually come down and take out that previous swing low to gather more liquidity and then you'll see final TP. Therefore, we always trail our stops two swing lows behind to avoid getting stopped out and then it goes to final TP. There you go. So we trailed our stop to this level here. You see how price, look, take a look at price now and you see how price has taken out that previous high low which it created. So anyone who trailed their stops, that previous swing low has now been swept and people have been taken out of their position. I wouldn't be surprised if we see price come take out this level as well, tap into one of these gaps and then see final TP. But that's usually what happens with price. So that's why you don't trail your stop to every single swing low. So we're gonna leave our stops at this instance after second TP at this previous swing low. After first TP, you would trail your stops to the previous swing low, but second TP is two swing lows behind and final TP, obviously, you'll be out of your position. And once again, price then just obviously tapped that previous swing low which you created here, which took out that previous swing low. So. It Anyone who trailed their stops to this level now, they've then just been taken out again. And you can see that inject of liquidity after it did take out anyone who trailed their stops to this level. You can see that price has rebounded and come off very nicely and it's most likely going to be off for final TP now. <laughs> Have it. There's not much to say about that trade. Very clean setup inside of the 950 1010 macro. This trade for you guys, if you want to backtest this, this happened on July 4th on Thursday. So it was a very clean setup indeed, and it was on the pair GBP USD. We not we actually trade Nasdaq futures, but I was requested in this video to go over a forex trade because I always break down Nasdaq, and a few of you wanted to see that it actually works on forex as well. It works in all markets, commodities, anything that you select to trade, whether it's crypto, forex futures indices it really doesn't matter it works in all markets obviously the macro times are going to be a little bit different but that's why if you do trade forex stick to the usd pairs and the macro times are going to be the exact same and you can trade any any markets any day of the week this stuff happens day in and day out it happens every single day I'm not saying you're going to catch a trade every day but these setups and models happen day in and day out anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did drop a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel we're on a road to 5k subscribers which probably doesn't sound a lot to you lot but you know we've actually grown really fast over the past few months straight from zero to 50k followers on instagram insane crazy stuff we're changing lives and the price section next week is expected to start getting a lot better and we'll see what we get i'll leave a link for our free group and our signals room in the description below so if you guys are interested in joining our free group i drop source in there all the time pre-market breakdowns everything you need for you lot who trade nasdaq futures and on that note I'm gonna end the video here and I will see you guys in the next one. I just did my 39, gotta change my sheet. She be rubbing on my body, sucking till my knees get weak.